Hi guys, good afternoon. Welcome to another episode of So With Joy. This is Joy, your host. Um, just wanted to stop in. I know I, <laughs> I'm much later than I normally am. Um, today has been quite an interesting day. And um, if you watched my story earlier, you know that I had to go get blood drawn and I am such a chicken. Like I do not like needles. So it, I was really overly dramatic, which it, it's fine. I own it. So that's fine. But um, so today I want to talk to you about um, how to succeed as a small business. So I'm not going to say I know it all. Um, there are a lot of small businesses that are doing a lot better than I am. But for those of you who are just starting out, I know sometimes people make New Year's resolutions to start out their small business at the start of the year or different things like that. Um, just wanted to talk to you about some of the, about some of the things that have helped me succeed. So uh, without mu uh, much ado or further ado, I'm going to go into them. There are basically five different things that have, that I feel have really, truly helped me. And these points are not mine original. Well, there I put them together based on different things I gathered over the, uh, over the years. But um, these are things you can also find when you do some research as well. So the first thing is do not compare. Okay, so my favorite quote... It, um, it goes like this. Comparison is the killer killer of dream, uh, dreams. Okay, I can't even talk. It's afternoon, clearly. Comparison is the killer of dreams. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? It means when you compare yourself to others, you have a tendency to measure yourself by their yardstick. And when you do that, um, it kills you when you're not meeting your um, your expectations based on what other people, uh, the way other people are measuring you. So you're um, basically not looking at yourself with objective eyes. You're looking at yourself with subjective eyes, as in eyes of the way, you know, through up the way others um, view you, right? Um, that has never helped anyone. As a matter of fact, if anything, it kills your spirit because you feel like, oh my gosh, I'm never going to get to this place. We've all been there. I started out as a small business. I remember the days where I was just like hoping I would make, um, you know, $100 a month from my sales. And I'm not going to lie, you know, there was actually, I actually had talked to someone who was supposed to be a marketing person and she said she would help me. And she asked me once, like, what are your goals? And, you know, I honestly said, I would just like to make like $300 a month from my sales. Now, we've come a long way from there. Thank you, Jesus. But um, I just want to say, you know, you can't compare. And the reason I was doing that was because I had compared myself to others and I realized that I wasn't selling as many things. And that kind of just killed my spirit. And I wanted to, you know, just, I guess, reset. And that was not the right way to go. I mean, I was spending time doing these and I should be able to market myself appropriately. So that's the first thing. Don't compare. The second thing is be, be consistent and don't give up. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, I actually started out this business um, making kids clothing items. I saw them, I, I learned to sew, and I was just like, oh my gosh, my girls look so cute in this, and I want to keep you know, making stuff like that and offering it to others. Which was great because I was able to do this um, for, for about two and a half years until my girls started growing up and didn't want to be my models anymore. You know, kids these days, you can't even get them to work for you for free. Anyways, um, so I did that and um, I, you know, like I wanted to give up at one point and I would always ask myself, why did I start this in the first place? And the reason I started it is because I feel like there's a niche out there that people who need handmade products and it makes sense, it made sense for me to be able to fulfill those needs. Um, it, 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 and it doesn't hurt that I also enjoy, this is like my little therapy thing. So I enjoy doing these, uh, um, making items with my hands. So I've always been good at it. So I figured, hey, why not make some money while I'm doing that? So yeah, so you know, just being consistent. I've been making hair bonnets now for, um, you know, for going on two and a half years. Now here's the thing: if uh, if someone came in and saw, because I know I sometimes post my sales from my bonnets and you know, like the numbers I've sold so far. Someone comes in and says, "Oh my gosh, you know, she's selling this, and you know, I who just started yesterday, I'm not selling that." You're comparing yourself to me when I've been doing this for a significant amount of time, two and a half years, I think it's, it's considered significant for a small business anyways. And um, you're just coming in and you haven't reached that yet. That can kill your spirit. So that's the whole point when I say don't compare yourself to others um, and just be consistent. At some point it will pick up. It, it, it doesn't have to happen right away. There are some people who are just lucky and they hit the ground running. That's actually the exception, not the rule. So please remember that always, okay? As long as you stay consistent and you don't give up, eventually things will break open for you and you'll be able to find your niche. 
The third thing is to market yourself and be prepared to take advantage of opportunities when it comes. So this is the thing, you know, um, I know that a lot of us grew up in a society, in a society where people are, being, are taught to be very modest. Oh, you don't want to talk about your achievements or you don't want to do this or you don't want to do that, which is okay, you know, to each his own. So people don't. But you know what? If you don't toot your own horn, who's going to help you? Um, there's no such thing as a freebie anymore. Even the, you know, the influencers want you to pay them for something. So you also have to believe in your products enough to be willing to, you know, get yourself out there and sell it. So, um, like I said this year, I'm trying to connect more with my, with my, um, audience and my customers. And I just appreciate the fact that people are willing mm -hmm. to take the time to sit and listen to what I have to say. So thank you all. If you're watching this, thank you. But um, I also, you know, I think it's also very important that I market the things I sell. You know, as you can see, I'm wearing a shirt here. I wear it. My husband is very supportive. He will share my Facebook posts. He, my family is very supportive. And even if you don't have family that supports your dreams, it's okay to still post about it. Just like, hey, listen, you just never know who you might be reaching out to. So if you feel like it, take a look share with your friends it doesn't hurt and it does not cost any money at all to do that okay so th that's a free marketing thing and then when the opportunity comes be willing to uh, and ready to um, to give it out so let me give you a story once um this was a couple of years ago now actually no yeah a couple of years ago yeah i feel like last year was the lost year but anyways a couple of years ago my sisters were in town celebrating one of my daughter's birthday and um you know we we walk in and my sister said oh you know um, what do you think about getting your products into a hair salon, I mean, into a beauty supply store? And at the time I was like, mm, you know, I don't know. I don't think anybody would be interested. But here's the thing. She asked me and she said, do you have any products with you on hand? And I did not. I was not prepared. Because, and the truth is, I've always wanted to do that, but it was something that I just never prepared for, so I never carried any in my car. And, you know, lo and behold, I, I, you know, we go in there, and my sister talks to the manager, and he's like, oh, absolutely, I'll be willing to, you know, have your products in my store if you bring, you know, if you have a sample to share with me. Now, because the distance was a little, um, it was quite a bit of a distance, and it wasn't necessarily, like, the pricing just didn't work out. So, so obviously, it wasn't, it didn't end up at that store. However, my, the point of me telling you the story is always be prepared. So ever since that day I always have a few bonnets in my car um, for when I go out because you just never know when the opportunity is going to come through okay so that's my point number three my point number four is do your research so here's the thing I see a lot of people who just take and post and repost what other people have done um, without really doing a lot of research on it, that's not going to help you and it's not going to get you anywhere. It doesn't get you to where you need to be. Do your research, know your products. There's nothing that irks me. Actually, you know, my other life as a manager, um, that irks me as much as when I know that someone did not do research and then they're coming to me with something. I'm like, listen, I will ask you 5 million questions. And if you're not able to answer at least a couple of them, then I'm going to be like, yo, why should I invest trust in you or anything like that so you know I, I i give a lot of respect to people who know their stuff um and then you know and who are patient enough to ask questions but research is very very important because it helps you it shows your audience and um your customers that you know what you're talking about you know if you call any of these um, Coca-Cola companies or, you know, any of these big companies and you ask them about their products, they can tell you exactly where their cocoa and different things are sourced from. You want to be like them. You want to know your stuff. You want to live, breathe, and be, you know, the master, you know, have a PhD in the products you make. So again, you know, and that's where research comes in. In this day and age where we have Google and, you know, different things that provide you with all of the things you need, you shouldn't have to spend a lot of money to get the information you need. Just go out there, read stuff. When you see articles, read them. Um, you can even invite friends to share that kind of stuff with you if they see it. I always value friends who always share stuff with me or new products or new trends so that I can consider to add to my store. Thank you to those who sent it. I appreciate it. Um, but yeah, so that's also very important. Now, last but not the least, a fifth point is um, manifest what you want. So, what do I mean by that? I know a lot of people. Um, at the times they say, if you if you if you see, if you build it, they will come. Well, that's kind of how I feel. You know, you should do with your small business. So, put your thoughts into it. You know, start thinking about where you want to go, how you want the business to grow. Um, you know, I am known for taking pictures online. Like, if I go into a store and I see something, I will take a picture. If I see the way it looks, thinking, okay, you know what? In the future, I want to do this, or this is something I want to do. I'll save screenshots and a whole bunch of different things like that. The reason for that is because I want to make sure that I am eventually manifesting what I am trying to produce, right? Manifest to bring it, bring forth. So, you know, you got to believe in your products and really, really know your products so that you can also know where you're trying to get to, where you're headed. So, um, 
you know, if you imagine it, it you know, you, you will succeed as long as you continue to go at it. Anyways, those are the five points I wanted to bring to you today. So again, um, this is just five different points of how to succeed as a small business owner. I'll just give you a quick recap. The first one is don't compare yourself to others. The second one, be consistent. Don't give up when things get hard. The third one is market yourself and, you know, always be ready to take care of, uh, take advantage of opportunities when they arise. The fourth one is do your research. You always want to research. You want to know your products because you don't want to be the person where they ask a question hey why do you wear bonnets at night and you're like uh, 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 i don't know so be ready to answer those questions have them in your head as long as you keep saying it see it in front of the mirror every day and you'll be fine and the fourth is manifest it you know you can pray on it and just continue to imagine where you're trying to go and i guarantee you eventually your business is going to take off too anyways thank you so much for joining us this is joy from printed bonnet by yobi coming to you with another episode of so with joy until next time remember to embrace culture with style and have fun while you're at it. Thank you.